before I give it on. I believe once you start with Orange County and we try to make some change there, then our next mission is going to be national. I've gotten so many calls from folks in Orange County and nationwide, so I appreciate you bringing attention to this. Um, I, I, you can look at the, back, uh, at the work we've done at www.playfullawfirm.com or feel free to give us a call at, at 66 240 that's work. And, and also, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to put my cell number out there too. I want people to call if we can do something to help them, 626-664-9489. Thank you so much. No, thank you for coming on, Brian and, and, and Dr. Ruby Dillon, uh, Brian Claypool. Uh, you know, we got to go to a break here, but, uh, you know, your, your story is just unfolding here, and, and I hope to be able to check back with, with you at a future date. And also, we're going to have a rally. I'll tell you more about that uh, to, to demand an audit. Yes. Yeah. In a number of counties. Oh, a, uh, you're you're listening to the Jazz McKay Show on 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. Jazz McKay on 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. It can all get pretty overwhelming. You've got those old 401ks out there somewhere, and also your current employer 401k plan. Help unlock their wealth potential with our free 401k repair kit. This special offer is only available this Saturday on the Mutual Fund Show at 8 a.m. I'm David Travers, Chief Operations Officer at Farmers Insurance. We're a proud supporter of the March of Dimes. Walking in March for Babies is always special. Rush Limbaugh. My instincts say, don't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Every faction of the Democrat Party is now a battering ram. Destroy the institution of marriage, destroy borders, destroy education, destroy private sector health care, destroy private property, destroy the Constitution and free markets. The Democrat Party is nothing more than a battering ram. Rush Limbaugh. Weekday morning, 9 to noon on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KM. VR. Glenn Beck, he has been sold to radical Islam and is infiltrated and he documented it since George Bush was in office. It's not just this guy, he was the last guy too. And we knew it. The minute we saw George Bush standing in a mosque saying, you know what guys, Islam is a religion of peace, we knew something was wrong. Glenn Beck, weekday morning, 6 to 9. On 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR. Coast to coast with George Norrie. Something bizarre happening in Idaho. The mysterious disappearance of about 30 dogs in southern Idaho has baffled animal control officials. The missing canines range widely in size, breed, and age. The dogs seem to vanish in the thin air, they say, and they are baffled why. Coast to coast with George Norrie. Weekly. Nights at 10 on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNZR. Mark Levin on KNZR. Nobody gets under their skin on the left as much as I do. And believe me when I tell you what happened. We're allowing our government to zap our influence. Yes, just the things we are. Pessimistic about the future. This is the mindset of the left. This is their psychology. This is Obama. We're not helping anybody. So Mark Levin. Show on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR. Got gridlock on eastbound Roosevelt Highway, you'll find a slow from parking to the night Tune in to KNZR's Time Saver Traffic and tune in to the will help you get around the gridlock. Northbound on the I-5 track to catch up with the port to home to Road. And get you to your destination safely and quickly. The 99 is open all the way through. Current County is a good help. Chevron Time Saver Traffic. I'm told to the Chevron Time Saver Traffic. Only on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM. KNCR. And we'll be talking about guns. Everything from hunting, legislation, self-defense. If it has to do with firearms, we are going to talk about it. We hope you tune in each and every Sunday right here. 
97.7 FM KN. <coughs> and, you know, before the break, we were listening to just unbelievably compelling testimony that uh, it just breaks your heart about, about an agency that puts kids into harm's way. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't even... I don't even know how to uh, how to understand this. If your job is to is to protect children, and and we have an agency in one county that is snatching children away from a, a loving mother, a loving family environment where where the parents just want um, you know want want to get a second opinion because they're terrified of, of their child going and getting open heart surgery at, at 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 the wrong moment at a moment when they're they're uh, they don't feel their child might be strong enough. The question to raise is, isn't that the parent's decision to make? And, and uh, you know, who, who ultimately um, is in charge of your health care? And who ultimately is in charge of your child? We hear this talk about it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I don't need a village. I didn't need, you know, a bunch of outsiders. I certainly didn't need the government. Uh, coming in and, and, and dictating to us when we were facing an incredibly difficult decision. But when then the government puts the child back into an environment that they should be rescuing the child from, it really uh, brings into question whether they are uh, doing more harm than good. And so on June 5th, we are going to have a rally in Sacramento at 9 a.m. because we're demanding an audit into CPS, and we need your help on that. You can you can join me on my Facebook page, Assemblyman Tim Donnelly. Uh, send us your story. Send us your contact. We will make sure that you have information so that you can come up and raise your voice because this affects all of us. This, this any parent out there who's listening right now could wind up subject to the clutches of of a, 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 an agency, a government um, bureaucracy that, uh, that it, it just seems to answer to no one. And, and if you speak out and try to oppose them, they threaten to take your kids. And uh, so we've got right now on the line with us another attorney, uh, Robert Powell, who uh, has handled a number of trials um, in the Family Law and Juvenile Dependency Courts. He is an expert at dealing with CPS. I first met Robert uh, when he uh, was involved in the Baby Sammy case up here, and uh, but he, he he's certainly a uh, no stranger to CPS cases. He's been fighting it for 21 years. is a leading expert on the issue. We had him on uh, Radio Free California a couple weeks ago. Uh, Robert, welcome to the program. Hi, glad to be here. So walk us walk us through. Um, because a lot of the listeners here on the Jasmine Day Show may not be intimately familiar with the case that brought us together, uh, Baby Sammy. Um, in as short a way as I can say it, we had a, a, a mom who wanted a second opinion. Her, she had a child five months old that was known to have a, a, a birth defect that was going to need a surgery. There was no question. Um, but she also knew from, of course, learning all about that and the surgery that, you know, you wanted your kid to be sturdy and strong and healthy and a good sufficient weight when you have that surgery to increase the chance of a good outcome. The child had gotten sick. Uh, she took the child to the uh, hospital very early in the morning, one morning, and because of his heart condition, he was admitted to the ICU, although he basically had the flu, which any child can have. And after about five days, you know, he was getting better, and, and she could see that he was eating fine and stooling fine, and they were starting to talk about doing the surgery right then and there, and, and you know, very quickly. And she, there had been a couple of errors, which I won't go into, that concerned her and how they handled the child in the hospital. So she said, you know, I want to get a second opinion. Apparently they told her, that you can go wherever you want, but the baby's staying here, to which she responded, no. And she took her child, put him in the stroller, took him to another hospital. Explained to the doctor what was going on there. He called the other hospital, Sutter Memorial. Uh, so he had a little bit of a lay of the land. Did a very, you know, good in-depth review of the child's systems and status and determined the child was fine. Before the visit even ended, a police officer had shown up, uh, called apparently by Sutter Memorial. We don't know exactly yet, but the officer showed up, checking on the baby. Spoke to the doctor, spoke to the mom, saw the baby. Dad was there by then. Decided, eh, kid seems fine, no crime here. 
go on your merry way. As you know, the next day... And that's where the uh, story should have, should have ended, right? Yeah, should have ended there. And if not, there was another chance for it to end, and that was the next day, when for some reason, CPS decided they were going to come out there with two social workers and five police officers, so clearly they weren't coming out to talk to them, see the baby. You don't need five police officers to see the baby. And they proceeded to pound on her door. She was home alone at that time. She, she said, hey, my baby's fine. I went to, she already spoken on the phone to the social worker who was outside the house. And hey, I went to the hospital. I've got no records. My baby's fine. Everything's fine. And they would relent. So she called her husband who uh, rushed over and came up the back of a, like a condominium complex. And he came up the back. She happened to be upstairs in a window holding the baby and saw him get tackled to the ground by a police officer and uh, yanked the key out of his pocket. And sure enough, they're coming around to the front. So she took a camera and set it up, as you all know. And, um, and the rest of the story is right there. And when she tells them, hey, I've got uh, doctor's records that show that he's fine. They're right downstairs. And, she, and they've taken the baby out of her hands, but they're still standing there. They say, OK, go get him. So here's another opportunity, right, uh, Tim? I mean, it's safe. Right. Let's look at the records this lady's saying that she has downstairs in the well, car. She steps so downstairs, they, and they run out the door. And they didn't, they didn't have a warrant. And they, they told warrant. her that just by reading the CPS order, and see, I really want to find out, where does that authority come from? And, and how do we check that authority? Where, what is the genesis of an agency where the police officer has signed off, there's no harm here, no crime, we're free, we're free Americans. The, 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 that, that part, of, the part of how we remain free is for the police to respect the constitutional right of every citizen and, and, and to move on when, when there is no cause for them to be involved. And they have to respect that. And yet here in this case, they are dragged into the case by, by an agency that seems to answer to no one. Okay, so several parts of that. Yes, they do not seem to answer to anyone. I can tell you that. They really don't see where they answer to anyone other than the lawsuits that I and a very small handful of my colleagues bring in the state of California. They don't answer. Um, the, they really are, under the law, one of cases Beltran, which I have from the Ninth Circuit in 2007, basically said, hey, police officers and social workers are the same thing. So all of those protections of the Fourth Amendment, and even earlier cases, Calabretta versus Floyd, said that they're subject to the same Fourth Amendment requirements, you know, probable cause, you need an, an exigent circumstance. None of us would deny that if we looked through a window and saw some uh, adult you know, stabbing a child or something, that you can rush right in and take that child. Uh, so they are subject to the same rules, but they don't think that way. And unfortunately, there remains a problem in many law enforcement circles and in child protective service circles that somehow it's different if there's a child involved. The Fourth Amendment, eh, eh we can get over that. We'll, just, we'll get the kid and we'll deal with it later. Because, by the way, every lawsuit I've ever filed, every lawsuit any of my colleagues have ever filed, those social workers don't pay a dime. Insurance companies do, and eventually you and I do. So where is the incentive to stop? Well, I, I think that's a great, a great place to stop right there because it, it, uh, it, this has raised so many questions. The, the video footage of this has gone uh, worldwide on uh, yeah. uh, Fox News and other stations. There's a tremendous outcry uh, when you tie it, combine it with some of the cases coming out of Orange County where they're putting kids back into harm's way. This really brings a, a, a powerful, it highlights a powerful need to audit the powers and how they're being exercised and what decisions are made, being made to seize kids and then who answers for it. And, and you mentioned law enforcement. When a law enforcement officer discharges his weapon, there's a process that's being answered for that. Whether it's a good shoot or a bad shoot, there's going to be a process. And I think ultimately out of this audit, we need to, to come out with a process that that goes outside of this cloistered society and, and uh, demands uh, some accountability to a larger group of people. Um, then, and there has to be, they can't hide behind this uh, shroud of secrecy anymore. But uh, Robert, thank you. Robert, thank we're you. talking to Robert Powell of uh, Powell and Associates. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for the work that you do. It, it, it is often, um, work that uh, there's not a lot of, it's a thankless job, but uh, if people want to reach you, how, how do they get in touch with you? 
Um, we made a, maintain a website, rrpassociates.com. Um, they can call my office at any time, 408-553-0200. And can I just real quick, Tim, say something about what you said? Sure. It's the sh you want, there's so many things that can be done to fix it, but you want to start with one, shed light, open the doors. The idea that everything is so horrible in, ch in juvenile dependency court that, oh, children will be traumatized if they find out that they got slapped by their parent or their parents got in a fight. These are the kind of cases that lead to children being taken. Parents get in a fight, they take their children for both of them. You, that's number one, open the bloody doors. In Los Angeles, Judge Nash put out an order, media can attend. Things changed a little. But you've got to stop the secrecy, Chief, because there is, without, without a public to keep them accountable, who is going to keep them accountable? And I think I think that, that ties right into the theme we've been talking about all day, which is essentially that citizens are going to have hold vigilance yes. on, on, their, on their government, and this should be no different. The IRS, CPS, or DHS, or any other three-letter abbreviation for some government agency there should be or for. absolute sunshine. We, the people, have a right to know. Thank you again for coming on, Robert. Uh, we've you. got to go to a break here, but you've been listening to the Jazz McKay Show on 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. More coming up after the break. Jazz McKay on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR. I'm Chris Squires with the local headlines as the investigation continues into the in-custody death of 33-year-old David Silva last week. The cell phones of witnesses to the incident have been returned to their owners. Video on at least one of the phones reportedly shows parts of the incident. That video may be released to the public in the next couple of days. Silva was found sleeping in the grass at Palm and Flower late on May 7th, and when deputies woke him up, he allegedly became combative and was beaten with batons. Silva died the next day at KMC. Chickens are no longer to be kept in backyards in the city of Bakersfield. Council members voted last night to keep the city ordinances, which bans chickens on areas zoned residential. Also last night, Council Member Terry Maxwell asked city staff to draft a resolution to ban medical marijuana shops in the city. The resolution making the dispensaries illegal is apparently not being enforced. That's a look at your local headlines. I'm Chris Squires on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR. Bakersfield's best news talk is now on both dials. 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR. It's my privilege to introduce you to my client, David Yanni. Hi, my name is David Yanni, a former administrator with the current high school district. When it came time for my wife, Pamela, Rush Limbaugh. You know that there are people who marry their pets. They could. I mean, they leave their estates to them. So this is a can of worms that gets opened up. But none of that matters. All that matters is that love is involved here. And love trumps everything. Love conquers all. Nobody has the right to say anything about it. There's not enough love in the world as it is. And who are we to stand in the way of decent, good, productive love? Rush Limbaugh. Weekday mornings, 9 to noon. On 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNCR. Glenn Beck, I warn you that the uh, politics of destruction, please don't believe what you see in the news. The, 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 please don't believe it. I know you already don't, but they are going to start to destroy people like Michelle Bachman. Um, they will destroy, they will destroy Ted Cruz. They will destroy Rand Paul. Well, that's why those guys have to stand together. But will they? Will they be able to? Glenn Beck, weekday morning, 6 to 9, on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KMPR, coast to coast with George Norrie. North Korea's Supreme Military Command say that its precision attack weapons have U.S. Navy bases in Guam and Okinawa in their sights and will attack them if it is provoked. What would Russia do? What would Putin do if these same threats were made toward Russia? Russia would be attacking right now. Coast to coast with George Norrie. Week night at 10 on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNVR. Mark Levin. All right, let's go to Mike Bakersfield, California, our great affiliate KNZR. Go. I have been watching what 
long local uh, congressman Mitch McCarthy has been doing for a while. The, the local talk show host here heard him on Sunday. McCarthy wanted to, quote, clarify, came on the air on Monday. And what you heard on Monday and what you heard on Sunday were two completely different stories. You know what that is? That's a Spengali. The Mark Levin Show on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNVR. Howdy, folks. This is Jody Whitnack, host of the Freedom of Firearms Radio Show here on 1560 AM. 97.7 FM KNVR. We hope you listen each and every Sunday morning at 10 AM when we talk about guns. Everything from hunting, legislation, self-defense. If it has to do with firearms, we are going to talk about it. We hope you tune in each and every Sunday right here. 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNVR. Or you can listen to the podcast at KNVR.com. Are you an insider? KNCR insiders get special invites to KNCR events. Registration is simple and free. Go to KNCR.com and register today. Have you liked us on Facebook? Go to KNCR.com. Click our Facebook link and like us today. Follow KNCR on Twitter and get breaking news on air, online, and now streaming on your mobile device. It's 1560 AM at 97.7 FM. KNCR. Drag out, dust off history books, people from the past. I mean, it is a really remarkable format that doesn't receive the credit that it deserves. And you, the people in this audience, you don't receive the credit that you deserve either. The Mark Levin Show on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNCR. Jazz McKay on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNCR. Welcome back to the Jazz McKay Show, heard on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNCR. I'm uh, filling in for jazz today. My privilege, um, uh, Assemblyman Tim Donnelly, and uh, you know I, I, I'm trying to bring you a variety of topics. Uh, you know, and at the same time, it might seem like we're really pounding on one, and that's this uh, this CPS. And uh, and maybe right now it's not getting the national attention that the abuses in the IRS are. Um, but I think this one really hits close to home. Um, when, when you when you see a government agency that is separating children from loving parents based on lies and. and willful uh, misconduct by employees, and then they refuse to rein in the employees. And the, and the case um, that, that, that I'm going to highlight in this segment uh, will just absolutely blow your mind. I, 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 I don't know how else to put it. Um, we, we have on the line uh, Deanna Fogarty, who was, who was actually a, a segment on uh, Los Angeles television last night, highlighting her case. Uh, she's a Southern California mother, and uh, a caseworker unjustly took her children in February of 2000. Um, in February of 2000, separated her from her daughters when they were age six and nine, and she lost contact with them because of this action for a huge part of their growing up until they were young adults. And so she filed a lawsuit. She had a tremendous amount of courage, and she won. And uh, Deanna, welcome to the program. Thanks, Tim. Tell, tell us, give us, give us the synopsis. Tell us the story. I mean, this is hard to believe. I, 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 until I met you in person and, and believed, I thought it was just making this up. Maybe it was a made-for-TV movie. It just, it just can't happen. Not only in the United States, but right in Orange County, the beautiful, sunny Orange, Southern California. Believe me, I wish it wasn't the case, but indeed, it, 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 it happened to my family. It's happening to many others. Essentially what happened in my case, I was going through a divorce. My children were seeing a therapist to help them navigate that process. There were safety concerns associated with my daughters that came to the attention of the therapist, and that caused her to suspect that my daughters may be in harm's way, and as a mandated reporter, she was required to call for social services. That basically got us off and running, where I um, next met with a social worker who basically was uh, willing to uh, abuse her power and um, create false evidence against me 
Um, she ultimately destroyed my life and the lives of my children. And um, I, um, I I fought back against that, filing a civil civil claim against uh, the social worker, the supervisor, and uh, the social services in Orange County. And uh, that claim that that trial went to um, it came about in 2007, and the jury rendered a verdict in my favor for malice and for denying my constitutional rights to familial association. And it ultimately was one of the largest awards of its kind. So, so your case cost Orange County almost ten million dollars. Ultimately, it was taken all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court denied it because you were right. And if right. yet Orange County came behind uh, the social worker uh, who who intentionally misled the court, this wasn't this wasn't some accidental thing. Walk us through that because. It's shocking what she said to you. She said, you will submit to me. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. She said if I didn't submit to her, uh, I, I would never see my kids again. And, and, and you would think after she did what she did and, 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 and you went into a court of law and proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that she did this, and the jury on the, on the much higher uh, threshold uh, uh, you know, for for a court finding, actually came through and awarded you this this judgment based on malice, which is a much higher threshold. Uh, okay. So, so it's so it's unequivocal. This really happened. That's right. And yet, her bosses at CPS never admitted any wrongdoing, never That's fired right. her, and and, right. and and in fact uh, promoted her. And now she is a supervisor who is involved in training other social workers. Is that not true? Yeah, that's that's my understanding that she went on to uh, be uh, promote, promoted and ultimately training others to do exactly what she did against me and other families. Um, what she's doing today, um, I believe she still works for social services in what capacity, I don't know. But um, you know, it's very disturbing that this agency is given this kind of power. And the taxpayers don't realize that their taxpayer money is funding, uh, you know, the wrongful separation of children from good and loving families. Um, I think it's important. Go ahead. No, no, finish, please. Well, you see, you know, I just can't thank you enough for uh, allowing us an opportunity to bring some attention to uh, to this fact because it's. We got that up. Oh, 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 that's too bad. If you get if you get the edit back, that would be great. Um, you, you know, it, it's just listening to her story is is it's hard to fathom the words that that she, that she just stated. Essentially, because somebody didn't like her and didn't get along with her, and she refused to submit to this person's abusive authority. Uh, she had her daughters wrested away from her, and even after she goes through this incredible process of suing and, and almost losing everything she has in order to in, in order to win a judgment, so that other parents won't have this happen to them, the the government agency doesn't even doesn't even respond by firing the individual or taking any accountability. And, and I think this makes a powerful case. Uh, for why we absolutely, positively have to investigate and get to the bottom and shine a light on this. Uh, do, do, do you have Deanna back? Oh yes, Deanna? I have. Oh great, sorry you got cut off there. Could you finish? Could you finish your thought? We, we're, we're, we're talking to Deanna Fogarty, who sued Child Protective Services in Orange County and won. And uh, go ahead and finish up your thought, Deanna. Well, well, I'd just like to say that, you know, thank you so much for bringing light to this issue. Social services basically have become an instrument of tyranny, and there's no question about that. The public needs to be made aware of the fact that, you know, a significant amount of their taxpayer monies are, you know, funding this wrongful removal of children, and that there is a financial incentive for CBS to open a case so that the funding can begin. And, um, you know, it, it, it just needs to stop. And what, 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 you're talking, what you're talking about there is that um, every time they get to a different point in, in um, the process, if they take a child away and then they, they go through different procedures and then ultimately many of these kids are adopted out to complete strangers, 
um, they, there is state and federal funding that um, that rewards them for getting to that behavior, and it, and it, it forms a perverse incentive to take kids and break up families rather than uh, you know simply only do that in the most extreme cases in order to protect the kids. That's correct. And Social Services is one of the few government agencies that falls below the radar with regard to accountability. <coughs> they essentially police themselves. And that just needs to be stopped. We need yeah. to uh, create a lot of attention on this and, and, and stop what they're doing. They're, they're there to protect children, but that's quite contrary to what they are doing. Well, thank, thank you, Deanna, for coming on today and for, for having the courage to fight that. And I know you get it, not for the money you get it, to, to set a precedent and, and to write an injustice and, and to you know, pave the way for other parents. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm very grateful to you for that. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the rally on the 5th and hoping that you'll be able to make it and speak at that because people need to hear this story. Absolutely, and, and it's my honor. Thank you so much, Tim. You got it. Well, we're going to audit CPS. We're going to shine a bright light, uh, but we're not going to do that uh, right now. We're going to do that on June, starting on June 5th, and we need your help. Uh, but we've got to go to a break here. You've been listening to the Jazz McKay Show heard on 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNCR. Chaz McKay on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNCR. Hello to my Tehachapi and Bakersfield friends and family. This is your neighborhood pizza man, Frankie the Finger from the Rush Limbaugh. I don't know what is so hard about getting me right. I'm on 15 hours a day. It's free. What is so hard to understand about what I say? I have never said that low information voters are stupid. I just said they don't know what they think they know. They are prisoners to the media, which has dumbed them down. Rush Limbaugh. Weekday mornings, 9 to noon on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KMCR. Glenn Beck. They want control of your information. They want control of the speech. They want control of your guns. They want control of the food. They want control of your money and the bank and how you spend it. They want control of your movement here and there and everywhere through the TSA. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that would only be an out-of-control government that would do that. Glenn Beck. Weekday morning, 6 to 9 on 1550 AM and 97.7. FM, KNVR, George Nori, Voyager 1, launched in 1977 to explore the outer planets has now passed into a new region on its way out of the solar system. The spacecraft now about 11 billion miles away, and it's still functioning, finally. It's still sending little things about what it's uncovering. Truly amazing. Coast to coast with George Norrie. Weeknights at 10 on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNZR. Mark Levin on KNZR. Republicans, conservatives, thoughtful independents. We're Americans. We are allowing our government to drag us down. Keep your hands off our money. Keep your hands off our businesses. Keep your hands off our seniors off our children, keep your grubby hands off our society, and your Obamacare sucks. The Mark Levin Show on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM KNCR. 7 FM KNCR. Welcome back to the Jazz Show on 1560 AM 97.7 FM KNCR. I'm your guest host, Assemblyman Tim Donnelly, and I just left the assembly floor uh, not too long ago, and um, there was a bill heard today, AB 711, and I first encountered Jerry Upholt, who is a lobbyist representing the uh, uh, firearms retailers. Uh, he came to the Appropriations Committee and testified, and he gave me such a unique look on this and really kind of showed us what was... Uh, underneath the stated intent. It sounds like they just want to ban uh, lead uh, 
lead ammunition used in hunting, and, and that's what it seemed like on its on its on the surface. But uh, once I heard Jerry's testimony, I, I had to have him on the air. Jerry, welcome to the program. Thank you. Pleased to be here. 